All right, hello, welcome to today's chapter dealing with the appraisal and the appraiser and how the process goes about that the lender hires the appraiser and what why they do this. Now, we've touched a little bit about it today. Today, we're actually going to get into some more math, and I know you guys just love the math on how the appraiser actually calculates the value uh, when they are hired. Now, remember, they are hired to protect the bank or the lender. They are paid for by the borrower. You know, the bank is like, well, you, we'll loan you money, but uh, you've got to give us an asset and you've got to prove that asset. So while the borrower pays for it, it is hired by the bank and is to protect the lender's interest. Therefore, don't forget that makes you the mortgage or and the bank the mortgagee. So let's get started on this, all right? So we're going to start out by talking about what an appraisal is. An appraisal is an estimated opinion of a value based on some evidence through some approved methodology, all right? <clears throat> So first thing is, it's an opinion of an educated person. Now, we use the word opinion, but I will tell you that banks treat it like it's almost handed down from the burning bush, okay? And you should have already caught on to that when I told you that the value is the appraised value or the purchase price, whichever is lower. So if you agree to buy a house at 250 and the opinion comes in at 240, the bank is going to go, nope, it's 240. That's the number we're going to use because they use the lower to be more protective. So while it is an opinion, typically they treat it like it is handed down from the burnt burning bush. Now there is a key section in there that says supported by an approved methodology. We are going to cover this methodology and how appraisers work. And they all have to work exactly the same way. Because remember, a lender could be sitting in Arizona financing a house in Minnesota and they want to know what the value is and they want to make sure that that appraiser that's sitting in Minnesota would get the same answer if the appraiser in Arizona had done the appraisal, so therefore they have to use the exact same methodology so that they can trust that that state doesn't like our state or the state wherever the lender's sitting, okay? So the appraisal is a specific form that's filled out by a independent contractor called an appraiser who is hired by the lender. They are a very highly educated license. There are a lot of people that believe that they're the smartest one in the group because they do all the uh, hard math numbers where we're all the soft skills like selling and, you know, all of that. So they are an independent professional, which is supposed to present an unbiased opinion. And that is key that it's unbiased and they do that through a methodology that we are going to go over and they get paid a fee for doing this. Now understand that this fee that they get paid is paid by the a borrower of the money and it is almost always, if not always, some sort of flat fee. The fee, the fee cannot be based on the appraised value. So you can't say, well, if the house appraises between zero and 100, the appraiser gets paid this. If it's between 100 and 200, he gets paid this because he might not make it unbiased then. So he is going to get paid his fee, 400 to $800, depending or not depending on the value of the property. It doesn't matter to him. That way it remains biased. Now, Fannie Mae has created a rule called the, Indep the Appraiser Independence Requirement, or AIR. 
basically what Fannie Mae is setting out is that they're, they want no collusion between anybody in this and that appraiser. And I told you very at the very uh, beginning of this course, we talked about all of the different licenses that were available. And I told you the appraiser was one of them. And I said, this is the one that you will have the least contact with because they don't want you to know who that guy is. They don't want you to you to hire a friend of yours to do the appraisal because they want that person to be independent. And there are federal regulations saying that you are not allowed to like help the appraiser. You can't suggest he use certain comps. You can't influence him like, hey man, there's a pair of Super Bowl tickets in this deal for you if the house appraises. They want them to be independent. Basically, the only time you will ever see the appraiser is when you get the phone call as the listing agent and go, hey, I got hired to do an appraisal. What's the code to get in? And that's it, all right? 90% of the time, you won't even know their name until the appraisal is completed and their name's on the form. As a mortgage company, I told you I own a mortgage broker. We don't know either. You know, we don't know either. We don't know who it is. We call our lender yeah, if it's United or Cardinal or, or whomever and go, hey, we need an appraisal for this property. And they say, great, we'll send an invoice to the borrower. When he pays the invoice, we will send our appraiser out. And we don't know. They typically, they being the lender, typically have a whole stable of people. And maybe that's a bad word. They have a list of all these approved appraisers that they use. Now, they could use this other company. There's a new thing called an AMC, which is called an appraisal mortgage company, an appraisal middle. I don't know. Basically, it's actually a third party company. So the lender would say, OK, who's next on the list? Well, Susan is the next appraiser on the list. Okay, she gets this loan. Who's the next one on the list? Our second loan that came in today is going out to Tallahassee, Florida. That's where she goes. And they just do it so that no one, A, knows who they are, and B, they remain unbiased, okay? So there is this Financial Institutions Reform, Recovery, and Enforcement Act called FIREA. FIREA was a, an act that was instituted that requires appraisals to be part of any federally related transaction, meaning that if a borrower is using their federal funds, which means if they're selling it to the Fannie Mae, Fannie Mae is using federal funds, therefore that loan is considered a federally backed loan, that FIREA requires that a state licensed or a state certified appraiser be involved in the transaction, okay? So when the borrower borrows money from like Chase Bank, FIREA requires that the appraiser actually be licensed when doing this. So that's what the FIREA law says. Now, there are some other laws that are in place federally that may say houses under a certain value do not necessarily need to be required by a certified appraiser. All right. In the example here, it's like 400. Uh, when I started teaching this, it was like 250. Uh, but here's the problem. That's the federal rule. And if you think back to what we have talked about in other rules where people can be more restrictive, but not less, I will go ahead and tell you right now that while the law says any residential property valued at 400 or less need not be performed by a licensed appraiser. Well, that's good. But the lender says, well, I don't care. It's my money. 
I'll do what I want. And they almost always still require that licensed appraiser because they can be more restrictive. Sure, the Fed says anything under 400, but it's my money. And I want that federal appraiser, all right? So how this comes about is there is this overarching entity called the Appraisal Foundation. The Appraisal Foundation is the equivalent of what you would think of when we talked about the NAR, the National Association of Realtors, which is our governing body over throughout every state. The Appraisal Foundation is very similar to that in that it is the overarching body uh, for all of the appraisers in all of the states. And this Appraisal Foundation is actually made up of two boards. There's the AQB and the ASB. The AQB is the Qualifications Board, the Appraisal Qualifications Board. They are the ones that deal with the qualifications to become an appraiser. They set the hours for education. They set the hours for continuing ed. They set all of this stuff or all of the qualifications to become an appraiser. The second board underneath the Appraisal Foundation is the Standards Board, the ASB, the Appraisal Standards Board. The ASB are the ones that provide the guidance and standards to the appraiser once they have qualified or become licensed, okay? So one board deals with getting your license and one board deals with how you act when you have your license. Now, the ASB, the Standards Board, has created this thing called the Uniform Standards, Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice. The slang is called USPAP, USPAP, U-S-P-A-P. That are, those are the standards by which I just mentioned that all appraisers use. That way, all appraisers should, in essence, get the exact same answer for any property, whether it's in California or New York or Maine or Florida, because they are all working under the same set of standards that was created by the ASB. Okay, now I want to go back up and touch on one thing right here. Can a licensed real estate broker do an appraisal? The answer is most assuredly, yes, they can. But that appraisal cannot be used to generate a loan because the loan is federally backed. I have done probably three appraisals in my career. All three cases, it was not for the borrower or the buyer to get a loan. It was the owner of the building, and they were all three commercial buildings, by the way. It was for the owner of the building that called me in two cases where they're like, hey, I need to get an insurance policy to cover my building I don't know what it's worth. Can you appraise the property for me? Technically, legally, yes, I can. Because that value that I'm going to come up with is not a value that is used to generate or back a loan. It was merely an informational number given to the owner who said, okay, I need to get insurance for a million dollars because that's what you said the value was. The third time I used it was for determining a value of a farm between two brothers who inherited the farm. They wanted to know what it was worth and because one was going to buy the other out. So they just needed to know a value. In that particular case, my valuation was not used for the loan. It was merely used as informational purposes so that the two brothers knew the value of the property, okay? 
And if you decide you ever want to do an appraisal, you still have to follow USPAP. All right. That's why it's really hard. And a lot of real estate agents choose not to do it because if you do it, you are working under the standards board and you have to follow their standards to do it. Now, that means you may have to have a little bit of education to understand what their use path says. So a lot of agents go, no, I, I really can't do that, but I can come get you in touch with a company that can you can hire it. So I can, a broker, a real estate broker can do an appraisal, just not for a loan, and they still have to follow the standards if they choose to do it.